three, two, one, and welcome back today. Uh, we got some new stuff going on in the studio, and this is kind of a new video that we're going to do. It's going to be an unboxing slash review of a new microphone uh, that we just purchased um, via Sweetwater. So thank you, Sweetwater, for uh, keeping these in stock and, um, yeah, and all the other things that you do out there. So anyways, um, let's get on with it. So we bought this guy. We bought two of them, actually, and they are the WA-14 um, condenser microphones from Warm Audio. And they come in this nice box, nice uh, cardboard, you know, very, very much cardboard. Um, and even the nice little logo from Cinemag's on there because these do have Cinemag transformers in them. They're USA made, I believe. So, um, yeah, they're great. Anyways, so let's get to the boxing here. Um, so as I open it here, it comes, it kind of opens up, you know, has a little flap that comes up and it comes up. And what falls out, of course, is the manual and sticker. You got a manual and sticker that comes with this. And I've read through the manual. I have tons of stickers, so I don't, I'm not going to go over the sticker. But the manual, it's got some good information about the mic itself and what the switches do and mic placements. The general stuff that you have when it comes to manuals about microphones. And then sitting on top of the very top of the box is a little foam. I'm not sure. It's just foam. I think it just kind of holds stuff in there. I don't know why you would... I don't, know. I don't really use these boxes as cases, and I don't recommend using the boxes as cases. So on the inside, you can see we got a bag for the mic. We've got a shock mount and some adapters and a regular mic clip. So the mag regular mic clip is tiny. It could be used for multiple other mics, I guess, in your studio if you're not going to use it. You know, pencil condenser, whatever kind of fits that size. Um, I don't know if I'll use them. It comes with a couple of uh, these bungees for, I don't, I'm going to call them bungees. I don't know if they really have a name, but the bungees for the shock mount in case they start to wear out because they do eventually. They kind of disintegrate along with a couple adapters uh, for other mic stands. So um, let's get to the clip here. So here it is. Oh, it's nice and loose. Um, this is the shock mount for this mic. Now it does look, from my experience in the AKG 414 mics that I've used that have this similar, basically similar design. It's just plastic, you know, mostly plastic. It's got a couple metal pieces in there. It's got a nice little set screw that feels pretty good. I mean, that's pretty smooth. That adjusts a clamp in there for your mic. So I'm gonna set that off to the side here. And then in there, you know, you've got a bag that the mic comes with comes with I don't know if the bag that's a warm audio bag so you, you do get you do get a warm audio bag to go with your mic carrying bag in case you want it um and then you have the mic itself um from what I understand silver side is the front and the black side is the back um I don't think they have different voicings or anything but anyways um it's got a nice nice logo on the front that that's kind of sits out a little bit you can definitely tell it's like a different portion but it also has a logo on the back so the logo on the back that and the cinemag because it's got cinemags in it i love that warm audio has been using cinemags and all of their stuff i love the way cinemags transformers sound um what they do the dynamics and the transients of what they um are being used on you know drums cinemags you know get that nice kind of transient response um like you get out of a console and stuff but it's also in your mic. So anyways, so if you're doing stuff like you're going straight into the box, like straight into your Apollo or your Focusrite or whatever you're using for an interface, you have Cinemag transformers to go through. So you'll get a nice warm sound. I don't know if that's a pun. I'll call it what it is. So put the box aside. So um, on the mic itself, you've got two switches in the front here, one here and one here. And the first one is a polar pattern, and you've got three to choose from. As I look here, you've got cardioid. Uh, that would be figure eight and omni. Um, 
anyways, and then the second switch is, I believe they call it an output attenuation or something like that. Anyways, it's a pad switch. It does minus 10 or zero, which is off. Um, so you got minus 10 and then minus 20, which minus 20 is quite a bit. My console has minus 20, um, which is fine. I'm like, I don't, I could turn minus 20 on here and here and have 40, 40 dB of gain reduction. So anyways, um, that's kind of the mic. Um, as I kind of look through here and see in the light here, it does have um, the nice golden um, capsule in it. Um, from what I understand, the capsule in these are made almost to the same specs as the ones that were made in the EB, in the 4 414 EB, um, which these are modeled after the 414 EBs. Um, if you were to find a 414 EB, you're looking probably a couple grand you know, for a vintage one where these are like 400 bucks and I bought two of them. I was like 400 bucks. Might as well buy two and have a pair. So anyways, um, to kind of show you how this clip work, this shock mount works. It has a little clip in here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, there's a clip in here that kind of grasps it, but you kind of just stick it through the hole in the, the bottom and close it down tight. When, once you get it, like you want it here and it's on a stand, or you just have a stand, you know, it's on a mic stand, and then you can just like, oh, I, just, I don't want it to, I don't want to pivot. And it's pretty sturdy in there. It does get, there's a little bit of movement that you can get if you don't have it down tight. Um, but if you just loosen up a little bit, you can like, oh, I want to position it, but it's not going to fall out. Like, it's not going to, it's still going to stay in there. But you can loosen it up all the way if you want to. Like, oh, I got to take the mic on the road with me. Um, like I do sometimes. I take my warm audios when I have to do live recordings and stuff, and I love them. Um, I do like the weight of this mic. Like it feels pretty sturdy. I feel like, like if it were to fall on the ground, not much is going to happen to it. You might get a little bit of, might get a dent or something in the grill, but the mic itself feels pretty, pretty sturdy. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the rundown of this microphone. I'm going to do probably a video on how they sound on Tom's because I did put one on Tom and hit it earlier today since I have two of them. And it did sound, I was like, man, this sounds fantastic. This is the Tom sound I've been trying to get for like the last six months. Um, not to say that I'm not, six months later, I won't look for another one, another Tom sound. I'm like, oh, I don't like the sound I'm getting. I want a different thing. But like I'd use these for overheads, guitars, vocals, and, you know, room mics, overhead. There's so much, so many different things you can do with a 414. They're, they're very much like a condenser swim art. Swiss army knife. Like you can do a lot with them. Um, I'd recommend like if you were starting out and you're like, I need to get a good mic to, uh, to record my vocals or my acoustic guitar, you know, and I don't want to spend, you know, I had a 57 and a 58 for so long. I just want, I need a condenser that sounds great. Sounds good. I would go with either this one or, or the, uh, 47 junior that they make. Um, I would go with either one of those. They're both great mics. I have the 47 Juniors as overheads. I might one day swap them, put these on Toms and put the other ones on, or put these on overheads, put the other ones on Toms or, you know, or whatever. There's so much experimentation that we want to do with these mics because they sound so good. You can, and you can do so much with them that it, you just, you know, you might as well try to figure out what, what else can we use them for? So anyways, uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell and the like and the subscribe buttons. Um, thank you all who have hit our like and subscribe buttons and, uh, you know, and the bell buttons to get notifications when we release stuff. So um, we're getting up there in subscribers. I think we're at like almost 160 or something like that. I don't know. But it's fantastic to watch the channel grow and you guys watch our shorts and like our shorts and comment. You can always comment um, on our stuff. You always hit, you know, hit the comment button, hit the message button. We usually respond back pretty quickly if we can, you know, if we can't, you know, it's, it's at least by the end of the day. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and we will see you all next time. Go make some music.